Hi, I'm Tessa from Tales from Outside the Classroom. Today I'm going to show you my favorite lesson I use for introducing fractions larger than one. So I really like to use the food as math manipulatives. It keeps students engagement high. Uh, it helps keep things interactive and they're just sort of great manipulatives. It also kind of helps see kids see the relevance to daily life. So for this lesson, I always buy uh, these frosted cookies. Um, you can buy, you can often buy them at any grocery store. Um, there's name brands, there's generic, these are from Walmart. Um, but I like the soft cookies because they're easy to cut. I have a regular butter knife here, but for my students, I give them a plastic butter knife. Of course, before we begin, we talk about safety with using the knives, but I've used this lesson for many, many years and I've never, ever had a student be unsafe with a plastic knife. Um, anyway, so we begin by introducing some concepts. So we talk about how this is one whole cookie. And I begin by asking students to cut it in half. And we talk about how we're not going to be exactly precise as we do this, but that it is important that we know that everything should be the exact same size. So then again, we talk about this being in half. And then I ask them if I wanted to turn this into fourths, how would we turn it into fourths? And then we would cut these in half. And then we spend just a second talking about what we know about this. So when we wanted to divide it into more pieces, we had to divide it into extra parts. And then I asked students to think about um, the size of the pieces. And then before I ask them to share what their thinking is, I give them another cookie. So we talk about how we have two whole cookies. We talk about how they are holes of the same size. Um, and then I ask them to cut the second cookie in half. I then ask students to pick up one of the fourths. And depending on how comfortable your students are with fractions already, um, you probably could have spent a minute or two talking about the pieces in this first one. But I asked them to hold up one fourth and I asked them to hold up one half. And then I asked them to talk with a partner about what they notice about them. And so usually we pretty quickly come to the understanding that half is larger than a fourth because I cut it into more pieces. And so typically I talk about fractions greater than one before we've talked about comparing fractions, but this lesson lends itself really nicely for at least touching on that concept. So we talk about how if we wanted to make it into fourths, we would cut them again. And by cutting it into more parts, it makes the parts smaller. So we go ahead and do that. And we talk about how we have um, two whole cookies. I then typically ask students to hold up two cookies, which it's up to you before we cut this into half. You could have had students um, talk about equivalence and talk about how those two pieces would have been the same. I find it pretty simple to just kind of put them together and help them see that two fourths is equal to one half. So again, even though I haven't officially talked about equivalence yet, I start introducing that concept in this lesson. So then I ask students to tell me about how many total parts that they have. And they are um, usually really good about immediately telling me that they have eight parts. But then I ask them to tell me a fraction that would represent all of these parts. And frequently, I get a denominator of eight because we have eight pieces. And so this is really where the power of things happen. So I ask them to take that cookie, one of those cookies away and tell me uh, what fraction names all of these parts. And so they would tell me four fourths. Uh, we would talk about how that equals one whole. And they could see that it's one whole cookie. And so then I ask them what happens if I have just one more piece. And then usually pretty quickly, somebody tells me five fourths. And so I would write that five fourths down. And then we would talk about what they notice about it. Typically that conversation leads to the numerator is larger than the denominator. And so then that opens up our conversation into how we know when the numerator is larger than the denominator, that means we have more than one whole because our denominator of four means there's four parts in a whole. So this must be five fourths and it must be larger than one because 
we have that fifth part. So then I ask them to tell me what they know about this. And inevitably, somebody tells me it's one and a half cookies. And so it's a great way to talk about how, yes, it's one and a half cookies. But if we're representing it with a fraction, it is six fourths because we have six pieces out of four. I do frequently then also show that mixed number. In third grade, we don't work with mixed numbers, but I find since mixed numbers are how they see fractions on a ruler, I want to help make that connection for kiddos. And this is a great lesson to do that. So we talk about how it's one and one half of another, but really if I'm talking about it as a fraction, it's six fourths. So again, I reinforce that um, the larger the denominator, sorry, the numerator being larger than the denominator means it's more than one whole. Then beyond four, it tells me how many more pieces it is. So four fourths is one whole. So five, six fourths is two more pieces. So then we bring back these two and I ask students to tell me what fraction is represented here. And usually after this conversation, we get somebody who correctly answers eight fourths then. We also then are able to continue to talk about fractions greater than one, even larger than this. So I will ask students to kind of talk with a partner about if they put all four of their cookies together, what fraction would that be, even though it's representing four. Depending on the crew of kiddos I have that year, I might take it in even another step further and talk about how we can find fractions equivalent to one um, or equivalent to two additional holes, especially with multiplying by one. Um, but I really only do that if I have a super strong and ready group of kiddos for that. Otherwise, we're focused on the hands-on part. Before we wrap up the lesson, I come back here and I bring out one more cookie. I only give students two cookies for this lesson, but I ask students what fraction would represent this cookie. And I tend to get... Um, some different answers. And so it's interesting to talk to them about then how the denominator of one represents this because there's only one. So this one would be one over one or one whole. But then if I add a second cookie, that would be two over one or two holes. It's up to you if you wanna start with giving students two cookies and exploring that denominator of one before you even get started. I like to begin with just one cookie and talking about it to review what we already know. Um, and then I tend to have some extra cookies I can use to model talking about that denominator of one at the end. Obviously, this was super quick. The work I take with students takes much longer. I give them time to brainstorm with a partner before we talk about it together. Concurrent to our conversation, I create an anchor chart based on our observations. So typically we record kind of those observations or generalizations that we find. So we talk about how the larger the number on the denominator, the smaller the piece is going to be. So um, sometimes I've even taken and cut one of my cookies into eighths. I don't usually have students do this just because it tends to get a little bit messy. Um, but we talk about how um, we know these pieces are then smaller because there's more pieces. Uh, we talk about if we need to find an equivalent fraction, just like we did with half, we cut it into additional pieces and we put them together. We talk about how um, another generalization, generalization is when the numerator is larger than the denominator, it is greater than whole, one whole. We talk about the generalization of one as a denominator. Um, we talk about comparing and equivalence. Um, I usually, most years, also take a second to talk about unit fractions again because students have a very hard time, in my experience, remembering that vocabulary. So I use this lesson to also reinforce that a unit fraction names the size of each piece. So this is one fourth of the whole, this is one fourth of the whole, and so on. Just to, again, reinforce that language we have already learned. Um, but our in-depth lesson with this takes quite a bit longer. It's usually about 30, 45 minutes, but it is so powerful for my kiddos. I hope you have found this lesson engaging and interesting. And if you use it with your kids, I would love to hear about it.